Yellowstone supervolcano, a strong 3.9 quake and swarm, shook the whole caldera today. Today we had a very big earthquake of 3.7 magnitude in Yellowstone, which is a supervolcano. <laughs> Sorry, it's not 3.7, it's 3.9. I'm, I'm still shocked. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we have to remember that um, uh, last year, around April, we had 4, uh, four point something, 4.5, 4.6, outside of the uh, Yellowstone Park boundary, and we were all eager to find out what the USGS would have said about that in their, at least in their Caldera Chronicles, which comes out every week, and they never even touched on that earthquake. They never touched on that earthquake. And now we have a 3.9, let's say 4. Okay, 4. But it's not just that it's a 3.9. It has been felt in an area which is, has very low population. It's been reportedly felt by 20 people that reported to Yellowstone. It's right on a fault line, and we're going to see that. But I want you to see the shake map here first. This is Hebgen Lake, where we had the 1959, August 17, 1959 earthquake, right there, Hebgen Lake, uh, which caused um, tremendous landslides and also um, the earth changes were so much that it created a lake called Earthquake Quake Lake. This is Yellowstone Lake, which is over the caldera, which is here. The lake is at the uh, south east corner of the, of the caldera. This is the caldera all here, right? Right here, you can see the outline right there. That's the caldera. And you can see that all of this is shaken. Okay, I, I'm not making this up, and I'm very I'm trying to be very careful with my words. Um, this is um, perhaps going to lead to other earthquakes, because this is, as you can see, this is only a square, but if you extrapolate the lines, uh, obviously they go, because they only put them on the square, but if you extrapolate the lines, because they're very intense, they can be going out to, to all the way here. I don't know, wherever, because they're very close, all the way here. Now, um, not, this is not the only earthquake we had, as we'll see later, we had uh, swarms there uh, in the past days, but also today. We had smaller quakes today, besides this 3.9. We had four shocks before this one. And um, the quakes today, um, well, there's right, all, uh, right under that specific position, because there's quakes all around the north west area of the park, but at that, that specific position, we have, um, it's at Cliff Lake, and we have uh, four today quakes, the 3.9 that we had at 1.06 p.m. UTC at a depth of 6.3 kilometers, which is like... Uh, over three miles. Five kilometers is three miles. So this is more than three miles. And we know that the magma, the roof of the magma chamber starts at three miles depth. So if you're standing over there and you're, you know, uh, a tourist going to visit Yellowstone there, three miles under your feet you have the roof of the magma chamber. So this is um, just about there, if not in it. Now, that was at uh, 106 p.m. UTC. And then you had, uh, that date is the 29th. But on the 28th, you had 9.54 p.m. UTC at 11.3 kilometers, so that's even deeper, at magnitude 1.3. And then you had at uh, today at 1.15 p.m. UTC, 
11.4, a depth of 0 0.7 magnitude. And uh, then you had another today's quake is uh, 0 0.4 magnitude at 10.8 kilometers depth, so that's about six miles deep, at 1.20 p.m. UTC. And you had a whole swarm of other quakes that we had um, during the past few days. Now let's go and uh, see the map. Okay, this is it right here, 3.9. Uh, this is the whole past week, okay? This is, this is Hebgen Lake. And you see that we've had other quakes there as well. But this is the one that's uh, around Cliff Lake. It's on a fault line. And let's pull out and you'll see that they are a swarm there. And uh, there you go. Okay. Okay, where's... Uh, I just want you to see just a little bit. Okay, that's Heb there's Yellowstone Lake. Okay. So there's Yellowstone Lake right there, and, and we'll see, we saw that the whole of the um, area that we're shaking encompasses all of Yellowstone Lake. So, okay, 20 people have reported felt it, felt it, feeling it, and again, that's the shaking area. Let's go to the aerial so you can see better. Okay, shake maps and uh, the fault. Okay, take, you off, take off the shake maps. You can see that it's right on a fault line. Right there. Okay. They're everywhere, uh, actually. Okay. And all the rivers and lakes, of course, are faults. And this is Hebgen Lake, which is, again, on a fault. That's another fault line. And... That's where we had our earthquake. And that is the caldera. Lots of faults there. And, of course, Yellowstone Lake. And how much, how many miles is it? It's like 10, 20, 30, 40 miles, something like that. 30, 40, 50 miles. Because it's a big caldera. It's like, what, 35 by 50 miles? It's a big caldera. And um, remember that this caldera is actually linked to the ba is coming the magma is coming from Baja California. And it's like a Y-shaped. It's a Y-shaped thing. And it feeds to the west here, the high threat volcanoes here on this uh, on the west coast. And it also has the eastern arm going this way, swinging up, and feeding Yellowstone with magma. We have another magma body here, the mid-continental rift, which is like a horseshoe shaped. The west arm goes down all the way to Texas, and even goes through Kansas, which has 15 volcanoes at least, and they're diamond spewing volcanoes. They're kimberlite, and they're explosive, and they spew spit diamonds and gems and semi-precious stones. And the eastern arm goes right here to the New Madrid seismic zone, which should be called New Madrid Rift Valley. It's a real foot rift zone. And they, the geologists know that this is full of magma underneath, but they, they don't know where the magma is coming from. Not to worry, because, you know, we've got asphalt volcanoes there. We also have volcanic islands there. Who knows where it's coming from, but there, the, it's there. All these are the volcanic island. Puerto Rico is a volcanic island. The Antilles are volcanic islands. We even have volcanoes in Mexican, Mexico and Guatemala. Take your pick. Is it the Baja thing or is it also the Baja thing stretching this way? We have no idea. But this thing here, that it, the mid-continental rift is the Kuinan Fault. And that is there from 880 million years ago. That's how old that is. And we have a supervolcano here around Quebec, around Montreal, supervolcano. Um, so that's old. That was old, of course, but still. This is, we, well, we also have the seamount, the eastern eastern seamount, 30 volcanoes under here. And we have five volcanoes in Maine pointing this way. 
uh, and this is of course the the north uh, this is the uh, North Atlantic uh, plate this is the African plate and the European plate and they all meet at the Azores and we saw that when we had the, the earthquake as in Turkey we saw the earthquakes the pressure sort of going west 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 and then we say ah and then it hit Azores a couple of days later after that sixth magnitude in Turkey around uh, the Euphrates around here Euphrates Tigris River and we saw it hit the Azores and we said oh we wonder if we're going to have any because that is like 3,000 miles from that area of Turkey 3,000 some odd miles and from here to here it's only a thousand and a half miles and we said remember in the video said oh is it going to do anything and yeah and we had earthquakes there as well uh, but you know not to go off on a tangent this is a big earthquake it's you no know, 3.9 okay let's say four no four canada would probably call it four and a half because canada has earthquakes measured five or six uh uh 0.5 or six uh more than u.s usually uh claims they are for some odd reason but anyway i shouldn't digress this is what it looks like and when and they only um show us one little one square as you can see they stop there. I don't know why they stop there because these things are so intense that they could perhaps go twice as big. I don't know. But anyway, we remember what the US Geolog uh, Geological Survey told us. They're not afraid of, um, uh, what, they're afraid, what they're afraid of is earthquakes because a super volcano, um, a, a big caldera has a big, it's not like a regular volcano. The roof of the magma chamber is bigger, like here in Yellowstone. And they're afraid of earthquakes because a bigger earth, a big earthquake can crack the roof of the magma chamber as opposed, as opposed to a smaller volcano. Okay. Anyway, a smaller volcano can't do that much damage as opposed to a big uh, magma chamber right and um, we know that Yellowstone is one of the best studied uh, volcanoes and super volcanoes in the world they have their own Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and uh, they have 60% of the world's geysers over 10,000 hydrothermal areas and uh, they're always getting new ones but uh, if they were to uh, keep these lines going because they're so intense, where would they go? Where where would they finish? You know, we have some other West Coast volcanoes here. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, the magma chamber of Yellowstone uh, is considered to be going all the way down to the border of Mexico. And, and if you take that radius towards there, it would go over the border of Canada. This is Vancouver Island. That's the border of Canada around there like this. So that's a surprise today. That's a swarm there. And this is Hebgen Lake where they had the August 1959 uh, 7.3, other say 7.5 magnitude earthquake. And um, they claim that a lot of earthquakes that uh, Yellowstone is having even now could be aftershocks of that earthquake. But nevertheless, we know that every time Ridgecrest has an earthquake, Yellowstone has a swarm, and so does Long Valley Caldera have a swarm. Uh, that happened also with the Alaska Denali uh, quake. Yellowstone got a swarm, so did uh, Long Valley Caldera. That happened with the uh, Chile earthquake and the Haiti earthquakes. Every time they had um, those massive earthquakes, Yellowstone started having a swarm, and so did uh, uh, Long Valley Caldera. Uh, and then we found out April last year that they, their, their magma chambers are connected by that thing coming from Baja down here. What is this? This is today's thing. 1.9. Okay. Okay, that's a rift valley too. As we know. That's a New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, and we had, okay, we had, we had a 3.5 here uh, near Mauna Loa yesterday. But, um, 
Okay, so uh, that is. Uh, uh, I expect USGS will come out with a, some kind of a uh, an announcement with that. Even the five point three, the three point five that we had off Mauna Loa was big because um, their Mauna Loa update of uh, February twenty seventh said, said that you know the biggest earthquake they had there recently was only two point nine. Well, they had to adjust that because that yesterday's was three point five. Um, so uh, that's what's the news with Yellowstone. And uh, that's quite big because, as we said, the bigger earthquakes, what they're afraid of, even even neighboring faults, not even, but this one happened to be on Yellowstone, on, on the area of the supervolcano. But they were even explaining to us that even nearby earthquakes are, could trigger um, problems with the magma chamber. They're even, they even discussed, they even explained to us that Yellowstone Lake, Yellowstone Lake, Yellowstone Lake um, has, you know, it's a big lake and uh, when they have a stiff breeze, uh, there's waves lapping over the, the lake. And they said that even the, the waves of the lake can trigger small uh, tremors. And that's also something that they have to be weary of because that thing sits over the magma chamber roof. The lake is over the magma chamber. And the winds lapping over the lake um, cause this thing to quiver and shake. So that's the news with Yellowstone. And um, it has an earthquake swarm. That's what I wanted to tell you about. Okay, so hopefully that's the end of that. I'll leave links below. This is, of course, on uh, Sizewa Berkeley and USGS. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.